guitar. Check it out. Oh. Can you see? Pretty sick. Just like this. This is also pretty sick. Hello! Did you see this guitar? Oh, purple, baby. Swola 99. Holy shit, 99. Oh. All right, let's take a look at this beaut of a guitar right here. This is the Solar AB 1.6 Mike Portno. No, MP, metallic purple. Can you see that? How beautiful is that? Holy shit face. And that's not all, we have two guitars actually. Check this out. Ugh. Wow, I'm choking on my own hair. This is a blue one. Look at this. So this is the AB 1.6 hip shot with a uh, metallic blue right there. Check that out. Both of them are, you know, bolt on, roasted maple next. This one has a hip shot. This purple one has an Evertune bridge. Look at that. I think that this look, you know, the AB with a uh, bolt on and uh, just the, the stacked single coil in the neck. That's one of my favorite models of solar guitars, I think. It's just like... Mm. We have a lot of news to cover today, so let's go. First piece of news, Gibson Thesis, a brand new shitty guitar model that looks like this. Brand president Cesar Gay can get gay... Gay Kian. Gay Kian. Kian. It's added again. He shared a picture of his Instagram uh, with this guitar right here. And basically, internet exploded. How convenient. And music writers are saying, we like the look of it and the message it gives. Gibson are not just c content with rolling out variations on past glory. I mean, it looks pretty non modern to me, man. <laughs> just saying. So it's a double cutaway with a hockey stick head right there, and it's a gold top. I don't know, for me, it's basically a variation of Past Glory. The complete opposite of what Music Radar are saying right here. The guitar features humbuckers, a three-way switch, a master volume and tone, Gibson USA-style Nashville bridge with Allen key adjustments as well as a thumb wheel and an intriguing vintage tremolo tailpiece. Okay, the finish poses further questions. It looks to be relict, so is this a future Murphy Lab custom shop run? Or maybe it's just another guitar from the USA Custom Shop. You know, it, <laughs> it's basically pre-relict. In the same video, it's also discussing that whether Lamb of God's Mark Morton might be announced as a Gibson under C. If Mark made a Twitter post with uh, a Gibson Les Paul logo on it, it has to be true. Regarding this new uh, body shape from Gibson Guitars right here. <sighs> Meh. You know. All right, so it hasn't escaped anyone in the past weeks that, you know, there's been a lot of talks about uh, the Pantera tribute reunion cover band thing that's been happening. Well, Charlotte Benante, the drummer, says that Pantera will only play select shows, tells naysayers, don't come. Easy as that. That's how it is right there. Shooting down everything right there. If you don't like it, don't come. I definitely understand what Charlie is saying here. They're gonna do their best to play the Pantera stuff, man. But I also understand the emotions of the fans or, you know, but... Is it really the fans that go ape shit about them doing this? Or is it just, you know, regular trolls and haters that are just being uh, assholes about Pantera doing a reunion? Uh, I don't know. Okay, it says Anselmo and Brown, along with Wild and Benante, with headline a number of major festivals across North America and Europe and stage some of their own headline concerts. Okay, so they are playing in Europe. When a fan asked Benante if Pantera will embark on a full-blown tour, Benante responded, I don't think so. So there you go. He says, uh, they're probably just going to do the one-off shows at the festivals, man. The, the shows that pay the absolute most. The same fan goes on and says that there's been some flack online regarding the proposed shows. Charlie then asked the fan, why is there flack? 
To which the fan responded, people are stupid. <laughs> Benante concurred, saying, there you go, and directly addressed the naysayers by telling them, don't come. Last month, Benante told SiriusXM Trunk Nation with Eddie Trunk about how he plans to approach the Pantera Gate. I can't go do this as the drummer uh, from Anthrax because it would be a different sound completely. So the way I'm going to do it is that if you close your eyes, it's going to sound like Vinny, basically. And that's how it's going to be. The sound is going to be exactly like him. That's very big words. If he says so, I mean, I'm really excited to go watch them live, and I really hope they do something close to Sweden. I was actually thinking of maybe even going to the US to catch one of their shows if they want to go to Europe. But as of right now, I see that they're going to do a couple of festivals next summer, I guess, because that's when, you know, summer festivals are... Uh, that's the season right there. And with that, I'm Frank, Frank Bello on Pantera Union. I'll be the first one in line for a ticket. No, you're definitely not going to be the first in line for a ticket, because that's going to be me. You know, I think he's probably going to be the first guy on the guest list. Rest assured, that's going to be the case for uh, uh, Frank Bello right there. And another piece of news, Dave Mustaine reveals the fastest song Megadeth have ever written, and it's in 190 BPM. Huh. When I read this headline, I was like, huh, that's actually not very, very fast. I mean, it's a classic, like, thrash tempo, but it's not uncommon that a lot of thrash bands actually go way beyond this. So, I was reading, and I... I yes. They're talking about the band's most recent single, Night Stalkers. I think that's the fastest song we've ever done. 190 BPM. And it took a while to get that working up to that speed, Mustaine explained. The song just needs that frantic pace because Night Stalker is a secret helicopter division of the hell of the military. Helicopter, helicopter. They fly missions at night and no one knows what they're gonna do until it happens. Ice-T does some great acting parts in the song. Okay. Not sure I checked out this single, to be honest. Let's listen. Concealed in the night from the light of the moon. That is indeed some frantic playing there on the guitar. Yeah, it's not easy to getting those, uh, you know, 190 BPM. Yeah, that's definitely a riff that uh, would be a challenge to play completely even. Like, sure, it's not a very advanced riff, but I can hear like it's just constant alternate picking right there. Getting that completely even, uh, that poses a bigger challenge when you have a song that's 190 BPM other than, you know, when you go up to like 220, it's, it's basically almost impossible to keep that completely even, but it doesn't matter because you can't really hear it. But if you go to a tempo like 190, you're gonna hear how exact it is, and that sounds pretty f***ing exact right there. Damn, Kiko. Save some notes for the rest of us, okay? <laughs> I'm not gonna play more because that's gonna demonetize the video. But that's cool, man. I, it, negative. When are they releasing the album? September 2nd. That's soon, man. Holy shit. All right, Stephen Wilson of Porcupine Tree. Incredible musician. But he also says a lot of things. He said a lot of things in the past that... Uh, you can agree with some things and then you can disagree with some things. That's okay. <laughs> but he's saying now that high game metal guitars don't sound heavy anymore. Okay, really, what does he have to say? I'm curious. It's like the best analogy I can give is if we're talking now, if we're trying to communicate through language and I would say everything to you at 100 miles an hour, I would just gavel the words out without putting any emphasis or emotion or feeling or enunciation. Shit, that's a, that's a new word for me. Enunciation, as I'm doing now, he told hard. Hack music theory? What the f*** is that? <laughs> that's not communicating. I, and I feel the same way with guitar shirts. It's, it's very impressive, but it doesn't communicate anything to me that I would really feel uh, there. Points to chest. Okay. All right. So he's just basically saying that heavy distorted guitars aren't heavy. Okay. Whatever, man. I think I have to part with Ingve Malmsteen on this one, saying, you know, less is not more. More is more. You know, more gain is better. Okay, let's uh, let's just have a lot of game. Let's play with a lot of game right now. I just feel like we need to make shit heavy. Uh, how do I do this? I can't. Okay, I'm just gonna crank everything in this Pliny plugin right here. Overdrive, drive, level.
Am I proving anything? I, I guess I'm not. Let's just... Uh, that was a stupid... That's a stupid idea, Ola. Stop that shit. To conclusion, Stephen Wilson has an opinion. I also have an opinion. All right, the, the, uh, I must confess, the news this week has been absolutely shitty. Really shitty, actually. But I found an article that I thought we would discuss a little bit upon. Uh, it's from Music Radar. It's gigging in the metaverse. Is this the future of live music? Which is a very clickbaity title. If you don't know what the metaverse is, it's basically virtual reality inside Facebook. I know, it sounds absolutely terrible, and it, it probably is. People are already buying property in a virtual reality space. I would understand if you buy something in the metaverse as property, if it's for advertisement purposes. I, other than that, why would you spend fucking shitty money on something that's not real? Anyway, they're discussing the shows that have been happening in different, uh, different metaverses. It, it doesn't ha necessarily have to be in the metaverse and Facebook. It's also happening in games like Roblox and Fortnite and shit. They're saying that the numbers are massive. Lil Nas X concert in Roblox had 43 million views. Now, uh, holy shit. I don't understand this. Isn't this just kids? Look at this. This is Roblox. This shit was being watched by 33 million people. There's a little mass. And it says concert, but isn't it's just the, the music being played and it's there's a virtual figure of him dancing, pretending to sing. And he, he had a mic for the ear even. It's not even correctly placed. He's singing over here. There's no doubt if this pulls crowds like this online. Holy shit. Here's one with Travis Scott. Who, who's Travis Scott? I don't know, but it said something about... Uh, Travis Scott's performance in Fortnite drew 45.8 million viewers across five shows. Scott's show had an incredible 27.7 million unique attendees. What? So 45 is just a spoof. That's not a real number. Unique was 27... Point uh, that, man. Anyways, they did this online concert... Uh, concert in Fortnite and with this they're also selling merch and uh, you know tickets for this concert I guess this is not a free concert is this really where we're going there's nothing about this being live and you pay for it basically oh shit there he is oh Travis Scott okay okay it's that it's that rapper guy right <laughs> you know maybe I'm a little bit too traditional to understand this but at the same time it is really cool I think I just changed my uh, my opinion in regards to this if you take take it for what it is it's actually a happening in a game that's obviously very popular Every, everything's about money in the end obviously but it's still a cool way of people you know that the love Fortnite or love Roblox they spend a lot of time in there I mean I know my son is playing you know at least one or two hours a day in Roblox that's where he hangs isn't it cool that he can check out a cool artist there? It would be cooler if there was some metal bands in there so my son could get into metal. I think I support. But calling it the, the future of live music, it's not live. It's the future of music in a gaming platform for advertisers and musicians to make money. It's just another outlet. I think it's kind of cool. But don't call it the future of live music, please. <laughs> don't skew things music radar you're 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 clickbaiting right there anyways i thought it was interesting to kind of discuss and talk a little bit about it right here you know it the opinion about it grew for me as long as you don't call it the future live music thank you so much that was the news everyone who's up there you won't escape that way Oh, holy shit, what's up? It's not that usual that I sit and record a video in this spot right here, but if you see my live streams on my Ole Anglin number two channel, then you're familiar, man. Look at this. This is my secret office that I haven't really showed that much. Maybe one day I'm gonna show it, but as of right now, it's, you know, it's my, it's my cave a little bit. So this is where I sit and pretend like, oh. I'm writing an email, it's important. Oh. You get a solo guitar, you get a solo guitar, everyone gets a solo guitar. President of SolarGuitars.com.
So I mentioned a couple weeks back that my dad found some old VHS cassettes, some old video cameras that he had back in the day from when I was uh, a little toddler. And I figured I would, uh, you know, buy one of these Elgato thingies that you convert digitalizing old shitty VHS tapes. And I figured we would check some of these out today. It's basically Ola being a toddler and you know, I think it might be fun for you guys to see what I was doing when I was a kid. And we're starting in 1984. Check this out. This is my brother Frederick, me and my sister Eileen right here. Look at this. Eighty-two. This is eighty-two. I'm basically one years old, walking around like a champ. Look at that. Look at those clothes, man. I was going full Slipknot mode back in the day, man. Dude, I wish I could rock boots like that today. Look at that little. <laughs> that cat. Yeah, I agree, man. That's what I said. Oh shit! I think that's Mass Crusaders. Do you remember that? Mass Crusaders working overtime all the time. Finding crime. <laughs> Something like that. Okay, so I found this video from 1992. How old were we? 11 years old. Look at this handsome guy. But also look at this. That's Luis. We're standing next to each other on uh, some uh, recital or something. She was taller than me, man. What? What's up with that? Little did we know that we would be absolutely terrible for each other. <laughs> no, obviously I've known Luis since the first school years and it's just really cool. We were in the same class for like six years or seven years before she uh, changed school. It's just cool to see old pictures like this, man. We, we're still hanging around. So I thought that was pretty cool. So back in 1994, my dad uh, brought me along for a uh, Chet Atkins uh, convention in Nashville and uh, 1994 I was I just started playing guitar and uh, I was skateboarding a lot at the time uh, so uh, unfortunately you know being in one of the greater cities for guitar playing in the US at 94 and you know we went to a lot of guitar shops and stuff like that I was barely interested in guitars unfortunately so it missed opportunity I'd love to go back to Nashville again and go back to some of these stores that we checked out back in the day where I didn't really care that much for guitar playing look at that handsome guy oh, that's, yeah Opryland, me and my mom riding some bullshit. Look at that f kid right there with the backwards cap. How cool could one be in 1994, man? So as I mentioned, I skateboard a lot. So I do have a lot of tapes of me skateboarding and oh, doing a shove it. It's called a varial today. I know, I'm sorry. And uh, I do have some more stuff to that I can show you where, uh, you know, my first gigs and the gigs with my bands and shit like that. But I'm going to save that, okay? So, uh, yeah, man, th there you go. A slight little look into my past. It's so important to record stuff, man, of your kids and whatnot. You don't really appreciate it until you get older, obviously. You get to see yourself like this. I mean, we're pretty spoiled with our phones and, you know, but be sure to save those videos uh, that you put on your phone, man. Uh, just saying. Like, there's not really that many clips of me being this, a little f***ing taller like this. But I, I really appreciate the few ones we do have and I really appreci appreciate my dad, you know, actually filming me back in the day. So, you know, that's... <laughs> Shutting off the TV like a pro. There you go. So there you go, a little bit of Ola history right there. I will be back and show you a little bit uh, from my first bands and my first gigs. That's gonna be interesting. We were playing some really sick-ass covers back then, you know, some Corn and, and Machine Head and Sepultura. Uh, I'm looking forward to checking those out. So... 
album tips right here. Okay, since I'm such an important VIP person of this world, I got to check out the new machine head before it dropped. It drops the... Uh, when does it drop? The 26th? Is that today? No, it drops this coming Friday, everyone, okay? But since I'm a very important person, I get to listen to it first. I've been spinning this album a couple times this past week uh, since I received it, and... Dude, it's pretty f***ing legit, I must say. They start the album with a 10-minute song. Now, that's incredibly bold, in my opinion. After you get past that first song, basically the album is more like a, you know, normal, regular album with a lot of really sick f***ing riffs. And, as always with Machine Head, great sounding guitar tone. I'm not sure if Vogue had any type of influence to the uh, uh, the album making or anything like that, or the sound or the, the tonal aspect of the album, but I can definitely hear some inspiration, at least. It's a very bold sounding album. There's the Slipknot parts, there's the, you know, clean singing parts, and, you know, it seems that Rob has really uh, practiced his clean singing a lot, because there's a lot of clean singing. Some songs even sound like Opeth, man. Like the, the, like, the acoustic riffing and singing sounds like Opeth. And, you know, all these elements combined, sick riffs and all, and blazing solos, may I add? Holy shit, some of them are really f***ing fast. It's almost like it's a... A wrap-up album a little bit. Like, it's it's wrapping up everything that Machine has done. You know, you have the new metal aspect, you have this, you know, death metal, you have the, you know, the, the grinding and all that. It's It's just a very mixed album. And it works, man. I think it really works. The album is called Of Kingdom and Crown, and it has all these Danish O's in it, which is, you know, that's a little cringe because, you know, should make it look cool, like choke on the ashes of your uh, crown. But in reality, that's not how you say this this uh, vowel right there. It's choke in the ashes of your crown. <laughs> that's how you properly say that vowel. So, uh, BECAME the, the fire stone. <laughs> okay, I have to read all the names now with this. Everdus. That's a great song, actually. My hands are empty. Okay. Unshello. <laughs> Unhello. Nugget. The <laughs> Masters. Yes, that's a good name. Bloodshot. <laughs> Retten. <laughs> and the last song. I live in with Fib the Sky. All right, I'm just poking a little bit of fun because for me, as a Scandinavian, obviously, this is Danish. This is Danish right there. I think they wanted the O's to look cool, but uh, it became a little funny for Scandinavians. Anyways, definitely go check out this album. It's a banger for sure. Album tips. Hello. All right, my friends, that's it for Sunday with Ola 99. But before you leave, I have to uh, let you guys know about my vinyls. So we haven't had like vinyls for a good while for Master of the Universe. And we finally received new vinyls for Feared and Master of the Universe. This album right here. Uh, I haven't had this album on vinyl for sale for about a year because of the vinyl shortage or like the, the vinyl, uh, I would say, the problems with the vinyl production because a lot of people want vinyls nowadays so you know the, the whole industry got f***ing uh, surprised uh, so I figured I would show you that we now have the vinyls back and I also filled up the stock for Feared vinyls as well so we have Feared Incarnators, Feared Winter, this one obviously, Feared Svart Fewer or Incarnatus. So we have all the vinyls in stock right now. And since we have all the vinyls, I figured let's just do something uh, where if you purchase a vinyl from today to next Sunday, I will sign all of these that go out. Okay, so uh, if you purchase a vinyl, any of them, like Feared, Old England, I'll sign them. Okay, so if you want to support what we're doing, that's a good way of doing it right there. Buy some vinyl. This one is my latest one. Okay, Star Singer. Guys, Thank you so much for joining in on this Sunday with Ola. I hope you have a great Sunday. Please hug your loved ones and give someone a hug. Someone deserves a hug out there. And uh, it's a cruel f***ing world out there. Please take care of each other, okay? Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.